and following is a marvelous story of Job's crisis in his life. Lost everything that he had that was dear and precious to him, every earthly possession, the richest, wealthiest man on the face of the earth in that day. He lost all of his children. And his wife said to him, why don't you curse God? He's going to kill you anyway. You're next on his list. And Job said, woman, blessed is the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job says an interesting thing in that passage in Job chapter 19, verse 23 and following. He says, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And for such a time as this, for this, Job was saying, I have Jesus. For this, I have Jesus. I find that very interesting that this man could say that I know that my Redeemer liveth. Jesus had not not come to the earth yet. Several hundreds of years before, Jesus was born in this world. And he said, yet I know that my Redeemer liveth and that on this earth he will again stand. For this, Job says, I have Jesus. What this do you have in your life this morning? Can you say, for this, I have Jesus? Can you say, in spite of this, I have Jesus? I have Jesus. Look at Daniel and the three Hebrew children. Cast in the fiery furnace, the three Hebrew children, and Nebuchadnezzar came and looked and said, open the door. And uh, he said, did you not throw three men in there? And they said, yeah. And he said, well, I see a fourth man, and he is like the Son of God. For this, I have Jesus. What do you have this morning? What are you going through with in your life? For this, I have Jesus. Daniel cast into the lion's den. The king came and said, uh, how did you survive? And he said, God closed the mouth of the lions. And I'm all right, sir. I'm just fine. For this, I have Jesus. What crisis are you facing this morning? Number two, in your crisis, in your crisis, God crosses over before you. Look at verses 3 and 8 of our text of Scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3, that it says that he crosses over as a consuming fire. In verse 3 of our text, the Bible says, and God will cross over before you. In chapter 1 of Deuteronomy, verse 33, it says, He led the children of Israel in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. Isn't God good? If God could do that for two million Jews, think what He can do for you in the crisis in your life. God has the power to handle anything you face in your life. The reason I know that is Psalm 23, verse 4. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. For this, I have Jesus. For this, I have Jesus. David said, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, for this I have Jesus. I've been in many a hospital room. I've been in many a room, bedroom in a home over these last 50 years as a pastor. And I've seen Christians die in my presence. And I've seen them raise their hand. And in essence, they were saying for this, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. They didn't actually say that, but what they said in many, many forms and many ways was, I see her. I see him, they're waiting for me, and then they died. For this, I have Jesus. Do you know that you're going to die? I don't want to alarm you, but (laughs) if you live long enough, you're going to die. (laughs) In death, you can say as a child of God, for this, I have Jesus. I'm so grateful that David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
I'm not going to linger in the valley of death. Death will have no victory over me. God's going to lead me through. And for this, I have Jesus. For this, I have Jesus. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He had no fear because he had Jesus. Because he had Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 9. I want you to turn with me there for just a moment. This is a precious, precious passage here. Deuteronomy chapter 9 talking about the same thing of getting Israel across to where God wants them to be. And so let's begin in verse 3 of Deuteronomy chapter 9. Therefore understand today that the Lord your God is He who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. <clears throat> so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. Now look at verse 4. Do not think in your heart after the Lord your God has cast them out before you, saying, Because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of those nations that the Lord your God drives them out before you and said he may feel, fulfill, so that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's saying God's going to keep his word. Uh, it's, it's not because you, you're so good. <laughs> it's not because you did well. That's not it. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. Remember, do not forget how you provoke the Lord your God in wrath in the wilderness. And when I do this, it will not be for you. It will be for me. It will be for me. He will destroy your enemies, the Scripture says in our text. But he will do that for his own glory, that not you may get the glory, but God may get the glory. You see, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. He said, I will destroy your enemies. For this, I have Jesus. Number three, in crossing over to the other side of your Jordan, and getting beyond the crisis of your life, God will give you a new commander. The crisis will occur, and God himself will cross over before you, and he'll prepare the way. Though you don't know what's facing you, he does, and he'll be there to greet you and help you in the way. But he'll also give you a new commander. Look in our text of Scripture, 30, chapter 31 of Deuteronomy, verse 3. Joshua is his name. Joshua is our Jesus. Our Joshua is Jesus. Joshua represented in a type form of Jesus Christ. Verse 6 of our text of Scripture says, He will go with you. And he wants us to understand something else. As our new commander... The battle is his, not yours. The reason some of you are fighting the same old battle is because you've take possess, you have took, taken possession of it yourself, and it's not yours. It's God's. And that's why you're in defeat today. Because you see it as your battle. God says... In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47, through his servant David when he faced Goliath, he said, you come to me with all your strength and all your powers. I come to you in the name of the Lord God Jehovah of Israel. And I say to you, this is, this is not my battle. It's the battle of the Lord. And I'm going to take you down, giant. <laughs> And he reached in his little pouch and pulled out one single smooth stone, put it in that little sling, that th little thrown sling of his, and whoosh, 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 and out between the eyes. How many stones did David have in his pouch? Can anybody tell me? Five. Why did he have five stones in his pouch? 